Today on Outdoors with Trav, we're going to be building this rustic birdhouse. This thing is 22 inches tall. It's more of a townhome than a single apartment birdhouse. And we're going to be putting this thing together today. There's four things you want to include in every birdhouse you make. Number one, the diameter of the hole is key to the species you're trying to attract. You also want to provide ventilation and a clean out so each spring you can remove all the old debris. And then lastly, you want to have good predator defense so nothing gets in and eats the birds you're trying to provide a home for. Well, let's get started. Let's do that now. So to begin with, we're going to go ahead and we're going to nail four boards together. That's how I like to start, whatever length you like to have. You can see it's, it's open all the way through. And I've decided to make this the front of the birdhouse. Well, by looking at it, let's see. I guess I haven't fully decided, but this looks good right here. Let's make this the front of the birdhouse with this being the top. The first thing I need to do is find my center and then we have to decide on the, the slope to the roof or the pitch on the roof. So it doesn't have to be a 45. Um, I often like to make it a little less than 45 degrees. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. Okay, I've got my center of the board, the width of the board. I measured down equal on both sides. Now I just need to lay out my lines. like so. Now I want to draw a line that is square down the side of the birdhouse right where this line meets the edge. Excellent. I'm going to put a C-clamp on the bottom of the birdhouse to hold it on this end. Just It'll help keep everything a little more steady. Now, I'm going to follow this line and straight down out of the pencil line right here on the top of the birdhouse. Here we go. So on this piece we've cut off, there's a good nail right here. Since we're making a rustic birdhouse, I like to use rusty nails um, that, that match the pattern and the wood and just the, the patina on this birdhouse. So we're going to keep this nail right here. So I'm going to pull these two pieces apart. Now the next step to the birdhouse, laying it out here, is to decide the roof, what to do for the roof. And uh, with that, we're going to be using these green shingles. So I'm going to pick through these shingles till I find the widest ones. These two look great. These are still nailed together. I want to keep these old rusty nails out of these shingles as well, because we're going to be using these to attach the shingles to the top of the birdhouse. Turn this side. We're not going to need the entire shingle. This has been exposed to the weather for years and years. You can see where the shingles overlapped one another. So I want the shingle to overlap the birdhouse by a few inches. Don't want it to be nice and, and flat. On this gabled end, I want it to overhang an inch or so as well, front and back, and a couple inches off the eaves. That'll give it a nice effect. I don't need to use two big ones, that's too wide. Just try to start matching them up and just find two shingles that will look nice side by side. There's not a whole lot to nail to. I'm only going to have a nail on this edge and a nail, a nail here and a nail here. I think we need to build some support across the center to give us something to nail to 
to make our roof a little more stable. So let's go ahead and put a block of wood between here now. Okay, now I've got this block we're gonna put in here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drill holes so that when we use, for example, the nail that we salvaged and run it through here, it doesn't split this old wood. Okay, we've got a block in up on top. Now what I've done is I've pulled the nails out to remove this side. Talked about the importance of having a clean out. We're gonna be able to clean out the birdhouse each year by opening the side. So it's important to pick a spot and to line the nails up to act as hinge points. If the nails are up high, what happens is the, the side of the birdhouse wants to open like this and it will hit on the eaves. So what I like to do is put the pivot point somewhere down in here where these two nails are. I just make sure they're set at the exact same position on either side and then when I pivot open the side of the birdhouse, it'll open like this. That stays clear from the eaves and allows us to remove the old nest material and then slide it back into place. But what I'm going to do before I put the side back on is create an opening at the top for ventilation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a half inch off on the bottom, then slide this down, and what that will allow is the heat to escape up underneath the, the shingles, you won't even see it. And uh, it will keep the birdhouse from getting so hot inside. And, and it'll look something like that once we can cut off the bottom. Okay. Here's how it looks as it hinges open yep. on those nails. So here's a birdhouse I built a couple years ago. The clean out is from the top. You can see it's full of this year's nest materials. And this could potentially contain parasites, even rodents, disease. So by cleaning this out, we're leaving this nest box clean and vacant for next year's birds. What we're mimicking in nature is a woodpecker's nest. The woodpecker drills a hole in the side of the tree and creates a cavity that in years to come, other birds, they come along and use the woodpecker's hole. So by um, putting a nest box out, you're inviting any birds that in nature would nest in the cavity of a tree. You're never gonna get an American robin. They build their own nest. You're not going to get a meadow lark or a killdeer. They're ground nesters. But there are a wide variety of birds that will nest in the cavity of a tree. Okay, so to secure the clean out side of the coop and to help with predator avoidance, I'm going to go ahead and sink a screw right here that will hold the clean out door down and prevent a raccoon or something else from coming along and opening up the birdhouse. Keep everything inside good and safe. Next thing is we're going to work on the bottom, the base. As you can see, it's, it's wide open. There's any number of options. We could put a piece of wood on there. We could mount this to something that it's going to stay on. But uh, what I like to use I think we're going to use this time as a, as a piece of metal for the bottom. Let me show you what I have in mind. So I like the way this old piece of metal looks on the bottom. It's got some rust, some natural patina on it. I'm using a regular length nail on this side. But over here, since this is our clean out, we don't want to drive a nail and pin it shut. So I've cut off this nail. I'm going to drive it in right here.
new nails up here along the ridge because that doesn't matter we're not going to see those we're going to be hiding that with a piece of old tin then we'll use our rustic nails with all that good paint and patina on them down here where they're visible don't worry about the gap right here we're going to put a short shingle across there to span that and we'll be in business okay i've cut the piece of sheet metal and i've bent it I'll lay it right up here on top. And I'm going to put four nails in this ridge to hold this, this metal onto the birdhouse. I want the nails to line up with the front and the back wall of the birdhouse. That'll give it a lot of strength. So I've bent a piece of wire to use as a handle on this birdhouse. And see how it's going to go. I'm going to drill holes on the front and on the back at an angle so the birdhouse has a lot of strength when it's suspended from this wire. This wire also helps with predator defense, predator avoidance. By hanging a birdhouse suspended in the air, we're making it more difficult for snakes, raccoons, squirrels to get to the front of the birdhouse. front of my birdhouse is seven inches wide so we're going to go ahead and mark it three and a half inches and I'm going to take a hole saw this is an inch and a half diameter bit it's very important the diameter of your entry for the bird that you're trying to attract if we're building a house for wrens it's a very small hole and that prevents other birds from being able to enter I'm going with inch and a half in the hopes to maybe get uh, perhaps a bluebird, maybe a violet green swallow, um, something like that. Well, we've got enough space in this birdhouse that put a block of wood in here to divide it from a single apartment into a townhome. Now we've got two entrances. This block of wood has a little space for ventilation. And now we can expect to get twice as many birds next spring. All right, well, thanks for joining us on Outdoors with Trav. I guess the only thing to do now is go find a place to hang our new birdhouse. Let's do that now. <laughs>